we want to talk about election season. You're saying election season, what does that have to do with anything? Before you switch your channel, we're not going to be covering who each person wants to win. We care about data here at Odds Checker. We're never going to put you in an octo box and tell you who's polling at what number of this and that. We want to know about the data and how that differs from polling and where there might be some value. Now we want to bring in Matt Chaparralis, former head of content at PointsBet. He's now an industry analyst. Matt, I appreciate you joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. And Matt, I just want to start super basic here for people who might not be so familiar with this because here in the States, obviously, you can't bet on anything political in terms of who's going to win the House of Representatives, et cetera, et cetera. But it's very popular across the pond. And why don't you just start by telling us how this differs in terms of these odds than those polls that we get hit with basically every day from so many different sources. Yeah. So I guess first off, I mean, to talk about polls, you know, polls are basically predicated on you know voter intent and sentiment, you know, things like that. So there's a good chance that, you know, voters, when they're being polled, either, you know, don't want to divulge truthfully what they're what they're thinking about in terms of a candidate or potentially they get to the booth and they decide to vote a different way than they might have indicated to a pollster. You know, so that can ultimately lead to like a skewing of polling data and maybe, you know, uh, in, in the worst case scenario, just outright uh, wrong predictions, which, you know, I think we all remember that was more or less the case in 2016 in the presidential election. Um, you know, when you look at betting markets, though, betting markets across the board, they are driven and shaped by money. And in a lot of cases, informed money, you know, so you're not going to get the same kind of biases and indecision and things of that nature that can ultimately affect polls. So for that reason, you know, markets are going to be a much more efficient and, and reliable uh, kind of source of, of prediction, predicting um, election results. So let's, uh, I want to start before we jump into the data. You know, when you're betting on sports, they say Vegas knows best. Who would be knowing best here? Would it be, you know, the, would it still be Vegas? Would it be Washington, D.C.? Who, who how, where do these kind of come from? Well, again, I think that, you know, the the kind of, you know, wide sweeping Vegas knows is 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 a little bit of a of a fallacy. It's it's more that it's the market, you know, Vegas odds makers. They're great at what they do. Right. They are able to use their own power ratings and their understanding of the market to kind of set the opening lines. And then after that, it's it's the market that takes over. It's the market that's going to shape the lines that's going to pound them into efficiency. And that's why, like, for instance, in the NFL, come Sunday morning, you're betting into a very, very efficient and mature market. You know, so the same thing goes for for election markets. You know, they're going to open and money is going to drive them and shape them. And and ultimately, for the most part, that is going to be a much more reliable kind of indicator than polling, which, as we said, kind of has the, you know, the the, the issues that we just discussed before. So let's dive into the data now. We'll start with the House of Representatives. We've been hearing for months now that it's the Republicans to take. What are we seeing from the, bet the betting data? Yeah, yeah. In, in this case, the, uh, the, the data in the polls are, are pretty much in lockstep. Um, you have basically the, the House is predicted, uh, according to both the polls and the markets, to, to be taken by the Republicans at about 90 percent uh, implied probability. You know, I think that, you know, another kind of, you know, tie that we can make to this is is, you know, trends in sports. They don't always have the, the most uh, weight uh, politics, especially in midterm elections. I think we know that, you know, the the you know, the the midterm election, specifically the House of Representatives, is, is generally a referendum on the party in power. Um, that is very much the case here, uh, barring something really crazy it's uh that you know the republicans will be retaking the house i think that if you want to maybe kind of equate it to sports it would be kind of like the texans going into buffalo and and beating the bills you know so not impossible but highly improbable not impossible but i, I think we can sleep knowing that it's probably not going to happen right <laughs> it's safe to say so what about the Senate now? Because that seems like a little more of a toss up, right? Yeah. You know, this is kind of where betting markets and the polls begin to diverge a bit. Um, if you look at the polls, 538 has the Senate as effectively a dead heat. 
Um, the markets are indicating that Republicans have a distinct advantage. Uh, the implied probability of the odds say that the Republicans are looking at about a 65 percent uh, chance to uh, win the 51 seats that they would need. Obviously, that's uh, what they need to uh, take control as opposed to the 50 that uh, the Democrats need. So, you know, there's there's a bit of a discrepancy there and it's uh, it's pretty tilted toward the Republicans taking the Senate if uh, if you're looking at the markets as opposed to the polls. Now I want to kind of take everyone through a couple of key Senate races. This one has been getting a, a ton of headlines down in Georgia. You have incumbent Democrat Raphael Warnock, and you also have Herschel Walker, who was a former NFL running back. There's been a lot of headlines from both sides in that race. What are you seeing from that data? Yeah, this race is pretty emblematic of the greater Senate race. Uh, polls pretty much have it as a toss up, um, as opposed to the you know battle for Senate control. The the markets are actually more in line with the polls in this one. Uh, Warnock is a slight underdog. Uh, he's about plus one twenty. So you know not quite a toss up, but it's you know very much very much anybody's race. I want to talk about how we're connecting this to sports now because we've been kind of dancing around this. Do you like Warnock to win at plus 130? Or what about the Falcons to win the NFC South at plus 210? Because I think there's maybe some good value on both of those bets, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I think you may be right. You know, I, I think a better question maybe could uh, Herschel Walker actually uh, be a benefit to the Buccaneers' run offense, right? <laughs> Given everything that's been going on with that team. But uh, – yeah, you know, I think given the option, I would go with the Falcons. Uh, you know, it's a great value bet right now at a price, given that they are in, you know, sole possession of first place. They have a pretty favorable schedule coming up. Um, the Bucks are obviously in all kinds of states of disarray, both on the field and and obviously off it with, with Brady. Um, and, you know, on the Senate side, well, I think, you know, betters can probably feel pretty good about uh, Warnock getting through as 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 a slight underdog um you know i think that it's you know Herschel walker is has proven uh down the stretch that he has been able to stay the course while playing uh i guess what we can only classify as a very very unorthodox brand of defense that is a very fair way to put it uh so there's another race that has been making the same kind of headlines but maybe not in the same way and that's in pennsylvania you have lieutenant governor john fetterman on the democratic side and then you have Dr. Oz, um, you know, we live in a very unconventional world at, at this point. I'm not sure who I would have put more money on to who to run, that it was less likely if it was Herschel Walker or Dr. Oz. But here we are with both of them. This is an interesting one because if you go based off social media, John Fetterman probably has like a 25-point lead. That's all you see are his memes. But Dr. Oz has been at least keeping it pretty close here. What are we kind of seeing from the betting data? Yeah, this is this is one where we have a, a major discrepancy. Um, as you said, you know, Fetterman has kind of been in poll position all the way. Uh, you know, if you look at the polls, 538 has him at about 60 percent probability uh, to win this election. Um, you know, it's it's been that way, you know, from the word go. Obviously, uh, he had a debate um, where he was clearly showing some some signs of of uh, the stroke that he had had. Uh, and the betting markets are really not nearly as bullish on him at all. You know, to the contrary, uh, they have uh, Oz as a pretty significant favorite at about minus 175. So that's pretty much an inverse to uh, what the polls would indicate with with Fetterman at about 60 percent. The polls are I mean, the, the betting markets are basically saying that Oz is north of a 60 percent favorite. So I think that. Uh, this one is really going to be interesting, and I think all we can say about it right now is that in the in the bigger battle between pollsters and and betting markets, uh, someone's going to have 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 their hat to hang on and and be be coming away from this feeling pretty good because there's a a major major uh, difference of a, opinion, if you will, on on this race and how it's going to shake out. Well, you heard it from Matt. This is going to be an interesting one because of, like you mentioned, how different things are. I want to. Thank Matt Chaparralis again for joining us. He was the former head of content at PointsBet. Now he's an industry expert. And again, there is a lot to get to. You can head over to Odds Checker and check out all the odds. You can get everything from Donald Trump to win the presidency at plus 370. He's the favorite. Or 
to not even run at all at plus 265. Matt, things are confusing now in terms of polling and betting and all these numbers we're seeing. So I really appreciate you joining us to help break it all down. Thank you very much. My pleasure.